previously on the Elite Dangerous Flight Academy. I'm going to be talking to you about basic flight. We're going to talk about docking as well. Oh, <laughs> and I nearly forgot. L for lights. Make sure you turn your lights off when you leave your craft, otherwise you come back and the battery will be dead. Good day to you, Commanders, and welcome to this edition of the Elite Dangerous Flight Academy. My name is Commander Nova Kane, and today we're going to be flying Professor Chunk, all there in her beautiful purple, in a mission to try and discover how on earth to actually understand all of the little pips, buttons, and functions that your starship can deliver. So, this is going to be a short video. Hopefully you'll be able to rewind and, and get to whatever place may be of best use for you. But we're going to be talking about how to navigate the in-ship interface, as well as the interface you'll find at stations, such as the one behind me. So, without further ado, let's get started. So here we are, let's just turn around and get a nice shot of that station. There, at the beginning. Lovely. So... We're going to turn on head look mode, and we can see here, we're in a nice cockpit, and it has glass, it has shields, I have a bounty in this system, oh dear. Um, we're going to be talking about everything you can see in front of me, as well as the left panel, and the right panel. That's what we're going to be looking at, see, 20 round bounty there. We're going to be talking about everything. And just to give you a rough idea, we're going to be starting with the central cockpit interface, then we're going to be going off to the left, then we're going to be going off to the right. We're going to be talking about all the ship functions and what they're all for. So, without further ado, let's get started on the left-hand panel, pilots. And it will come up first with navigation. You'll notice there on the top, there are five potential tabs for this panel here on the left. The, two, the last two on the list, the sub-targets and cargo tabs, are currently blocked out because we don't have a target selected. Now, we're going to start with navigation. When you enter any system, uh, these, the closest star will always be listed first, but then everything that you know about in the system, uh, that is, you've got the exploration data for, uh, either you purchased it, discovered it yourself, um, or it's a system with a large enough population that you already know where everything is. Um, and that's, I think that's above one million, one million people. Uh, but we'll have to see. They'll all be listed here. Uh, distance is listed on the right. Uh, the stars there at the top first. Everything else is listed by um, which entities are closest. The station here is listed after the planet for some reason. I guess that's a some sort of subdivision. We're 25 kilometers from the station and 10.4 megameters from the station. That's obviously million meters. Um, and then the most common unit of distance you will find in Super cruise, when you're going between different parts of a single solar system, is a unit of measurement called light seconds, which is obviously light years, but instead of years, they're seconds. So light would take 299 seconds to get from that belt cluster to my current position, um, and if we were traveling at the speed of light, it would take 299 seconds for me to reach that position there. So, there we are. That's the navigation panel. Now, if we were to press our primary fire button or whatever you've got bound to menu select in the options screen in the control bindings menu, uh, we will have this option. We can either lock destination, which if we go back to our central center panel here, we can see there in the bottom left hand corner it's locked in the nav beacon as our current destination and the compass there. We'll be, we'll be talking about the, what the compass is. I said we'd start with this, but we've gone to this. There we are. We'll, we'll, go, we'll go clockwise. Um, the compass there is, is telling us where to go. We'll talk about exactly what that means in a moment. So back to the left-hand panel. We can do that with, with anything we see. Lock destination. Or we can lock and it'll super cruise automatically. So if we did that, it would charge up our frame trip drive. But we're not going to do that. So I just pressed uh, menu select again to cancel that. Now on the left hand side, you've got the galaxy map, the system map, and galactic powers screens. Now we will talk about those in the navigation tutorial, which is also part of the Elite Dangerous Flight Academy. So do stay tuned. 
um, but we can access these through this panel here on navigation. Above those buttons, you get some information about the system, such as where you are. We are currently um, the closest area we are to is Jake's Enterprise, uh, starport in Ross 878. Uh, and that is where we are. The destination we've selected, which in this case is a belt cluster, is 305 light seconds away. And you see that's um, listed underneath the location there in the top left of the panel. Now, we're going to go to the next tab, which is Transactions. Transactions is one of the most important panels um, to keep uh, an eye on your career. It will have contracts. These are missions that you've accepted from various stations, including ones that have been completed, but you haven't yet gone to get paid yet, like this one. So if I went to Fane's to Quimper Dock, I'd cash in 41 grand for shooting some smugglers. Damn smugglers. Um, and now we've accepted all of these missions. So this one's going to expire quite quickly, and that's worth quite a bit. <laughs> We need to get four more of those um, within 45 minutes. I'm sure we can do that. Um, so we've, we've got all of these here. Um, underneath those, we've got active bounties. So in this system at the moment, 20,000 is on my head for this system. If I was to get killed by a bounty hunter, that would turn into a dormant bounty, as are all of these. See, I've been killed a lot <laughs> for these ones. Uh, Beliri, I was undermining the Emperor. Um, and got quite a bounty on my head in Boleria. But now, now they're all dormant. Uh, the key thing to uh, know about dormant bounties, you can see them here on the transaction tab. If I was to go to Boleria and shoot somebody, I think they have about 15,000 bounty per space murder. If I was to do that, it, it wouldn't start a new bounty. It would increase that one. So it would be 175,000. And that's, that's no good. That's enticing. So there we are. Lots of those. And these are claims. So these are bounties that we've got on other people here. So we've got our 1,000 credit weekly bonus from Zachary Hudson. Tr terrific. And we also are owed a th a 1,300 quid from Alliance members for shooting some people. Uh, so, so that's that. If you don't know what that is, have a look at the Power Play tutorial. Also, isn't this the best text tone ever? Under the sea. Fantastic. Uh, contacts. Contacts will have everything you can see on your sensor readout. If you're in Super Cruise, it will also list other people um, who are in Super Cruise that you can detect. Uh, at the moment, we've only got one contact on our radar that's big enough to register at this distance, and that's Jake's Enterprise, um, which is the station in front of us. Which, I mean, quite clearly, it's there. We can see it. So, no problem. If we were to target Jake's Enterprise... Then, look at that. The other two light up. Sub-targets, no subsystems, because it's a station. If it was a starship, we would see all of the systems on that craft, such as their frameshift drive, their power plant, their weapons arrays, etc. And we could target them independently if we were to assault that craft. Cargo, if we had a cargo scanner, again, if it's a craft, we had a cargo scanner, we could scan and see what they have on board, whether it's worth our while um, as a pirate. Have a look at the Elite Dangerous Job Center tutorial on piracy for more information. So, that's everything there is to this panel. Not too bad at all. On the right-hand panel, things get a slightly bit more complicated. So, we are going to stick with the center panel at the moment. And we're going to go from the bottom center, which is our um, flight control and scanner readout display. Now, this has its own button that you can use to focus in on it. I'm using the shift key, left shift. Um, in my Novocaine bindings, um, but obviously do whatever's best for you. So we can see here that our ship is uh, the yellow triangle in the center of the display, and dead in front of us is the station. Now, I'm going to give you an idea of how this works in terms of the orientation. So let's put ourselves at a 90-degree angle to the station, so the station is directly underneath us. I'm just going to pull back on the throttle. And how do I know when it's directly underneath us? Right there. So if we have a look now, we can see that the l there's a line coming from that station that's going directly from our position downwards, which means they are directly downwards. And so if we were to correct that, we would go forward and we see there, it, now that line gets shorter. And if the line is short, if the line is short or doesn't exist, then they are on your horizontal plane. If they, and then if they're on the horizontal plane, so obviously that's left and right, uh, there'll be no line. And then you really just have to get them uh, towards the top of the ring there. So if they were 90 degrees to the right of us, 
could probably do this a bit quicker. <laughs> there we are. So if they were 90 degrees to the right of us, it would look... Da -da 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 -da. It would look like that. And the same goes for the four compass points there. So if there is a vessel that is there, well, we know we know roughly we know exactly where they are now. They're straight underneath us. And similarly, if there is a readout that reads like this, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> uh, then we know they're going to be at 90 degree angle vertically. So if you look up, indeed there they are. Superb. So that's how we use the sensor display. That's roughly how it works. Frontier have released an official video about the interface. Do check that out in addition to my own commentary. Um, so sticking with the sensor, we've got a panel here on the right-hand side. That is our throttle control. Now, I'm using a HOTAS joystick setup, which means I have an analog control over it. So I'm just going to throttle up a little bit, and we'll see there. And we'll just put it on a teeny, teeny, tiny amount and we're going to get up to 20. Now, 20, it's measured in meters per second. So if we have a look there, 25.4 kilometers. So it's going to be very, very slowly moving that way. But it's so massive that it, we're, not, we're barely going to register a difference there. Um, now, you might be noticing the little blue zone there in the right. I'll give you an idea what that is. I'm going to turn flight assist off. Flight assist off. You can see there, it's very, very different. I still haven't told you what it is. We're going to turn the flight assist back on. Basically, that little blue zone is um, a guide to what level of thrust will give you the best turning circle for your craft. It obviously differs depending on what thrusters you have, how heavy you are, and what ship you're piloting. Professor Chunk here has got a blue zone between roughly 140 to... 115 and that means if we're in that blue zone then we're going to get the best turning circle so that's what we've got now nice and smooth we'll put it down below the blue zone and then try to do the same thing it's it it, it might not look slower but it feels so much slower so if you want to make some quick turns keep in that blue zone on the left hand panel is the compass that is the single most important thing in this central display, I believe. So at the moment, remember, our navigation lock is a belt cluster somewhere. Down here. That's the, the orange pip there telling us. If we went to relock on Jake's Enterprise, lock destination, then we can see the compass has changed, and now it's gone from hollow to solid, and we're pretty much dead center. So now it's aiming us towards Jake Enterprise. So let's say something bad happened, and we got completely out of kilter, and, uh, and bad stuff happened. Or we were in Super Cruise, and we were looking to see where, where the station was. Let's have a look at where it is now. So the compass, it's gone a little bit towards the bottom and the, and the left there, but it's also become hollow. Hollow means that it's behind us. So there is a, a plane that sort of goes in a circle from the side of your ship all the way around and if it's this side of it that compass will be solid if it's behind it it will go hollow like so and just to demonstrate we're going to turn around and there we are you saw it went hollow as it passed the plane and now there we are, 32 kilometers away from Jake's Enterprise and closing. Now you see there's a little number there that means if we stay at 70 level off and we're 71 now so at this speed the Jake's Enterprise is, is a stationary point um, it will take us 7 minutes and 15 seconds 14 13 etc to arrive if we increase obviously the projection will match that if we decrease same thing so it'll give you a rough idea of course space is relative um, and as you have to slow down to actually approach targets in Super Cruise, again, have a look at the navigation tutorial. Um, it just <laughs> it took three days. <laughs> um, uh, then the the clock will change, so you might find that it will stay on eight seconds because you're slowing down as you approach. So it's all relative, um, but 
that's how you're going to arrive safely. So there we are. We've also got a heat display here on the left-hand side. Um, the I, I, I tell you what, I'm going to turn on silent running. Silent running. And we'll see. That's So basically what I've done is I've turned off my radiators. You can see the heat starting to rise from my main reactor. And so that's slowly climbing. At 40%, we're fine. 42, 45. Not too bad. If we were to fire our boost thrusters, that goes up a lot quicker now. And until we turn off silent running, we have no way of venting this heat unless we had uh, a heat module, a heat sink launcher. So when we start getting towards 100, we will get a temperature warning. We will start to see the dashboard steam as we get towards the big one double O. Lots of lights and warnings. Now we're going to hit 100%. So we are now at thermal tolerance of this craft. The heat will keep rising. We can see now we're in the danger zone. Now it's much like a rev counter. Oh, oh <laughs> I've revved so much. Right, now we're at 122, 124. We'll have a look at our modules on the right hand side. They're taking some damage. So we are now going to deactivate silent running and open the vents and we'll vent that heat away. So that's an idea of the heat um, display there and not to turn on sticky keys. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't believe that happened. Um, and our shields will now start to recharge. So if we get over 100, we're going to start taking damage. If we get to 115, 120, we're going to start taking serious damage. Much higher than that and you're going to be looking at ship destruction, so be aware. Now, going from that in a clockwise fashion, we've got our ship display. Very simple. It will show your relative position. On the right, so I'm looking at the at the display there with my ship 3D hologram in it. So if we're pivoting or rolling or yawing, it will display our direction. Um, we can see our shield there. It's currently recharging. And underneath that is our hull integrity. So it's listed in bars and a percentage there. Percentage is what you spend most of your time looking at. Remember, we're 99% because we crashed inside the station prior to recording. <laughs> um, to the right of that is our energy display. Now, this is very important. There are three main um, groups of systems within your craft and they each have varying energy needs. The more energy you pump into them, the better they'll perform. Systems, engines and weapons, represented by SYS, ENG and WEP. At the bottom there, RST stands for Restore and if I activate that control now, it will put two in each, which is a balanced power readout. If I was cruising, I'd probably put four into engines. If I was in danger, I'd put them all in systems and engines, maybe three each. If I was on the offensive and wasn't taking much fire, I'd put them all in weapons, maybe a couple for engines. If I was taking fire, maybe I'd do something like that. And reset to normal. How you do that is entirely dependent on you. Um, there are control bindings to do that in the options screen. And have a look at the um, f uh, episode one of the Elite Dangerous Flight Academy for information on bindings and what I've decided to, to go with and what will work best for you. Now, on the right of that, in the bottom right corner, we will see at the top we've got a wanted <laughs> label on there because we are wanted by the local authorities in this system. Um, basically, if there is something uh, that you should know, like if you're wanted, if you're carrying cargo that is illegal in this sector, if you're speeding in a station, it will display there. So keep an eye out. Below that, there's that sort of, uh, you know, ECG kind of thing, um, that little bar. That's our heat signature. Um, and that basically determines how visible we are to other players and NPC scanners. So at the moment, we're relatively quiet. And that's all determined by our heat at 28%. Um, or if we were running silent running, which I just did. Uh, if we activate that, that bar will be replaced by silent running. And you're as invisible as you could possibly be. Um, however, of course, you'll start to burn up because you've sh shot off all the radiators to your craft. Um, doing things like... Deploying additional modules will increase it. Firing thermal weapons will increase it. Along with our heat 
Right, we're now at 66% of tolerance. And it's going to stay there. And we can see now our heat signature is huge. As we cool off, it will go back down again. Underneath that are your fuel tanks. You have two tanks, a primary and secondary tank. When you're flying around in normal space, it will be your secondary tank, which is the smaller of the two lines. Um, underneath that is the big bar, and that's used for your hyperspace jumps. Um, you can run out of the little one, that's fine, because it will just take a little bit of the smaller, of the, the thicker one to replenish it. If you run out of the big one, then you are stranded. If you run out of fuel entirely, your ship will explode. So be aware of that. Now your fuel usage is dependent on your power demand. So at the moment we're, we're burning 1.39 tons of fuel per hour. If we were to throttle up, that would do nothing. I thought it would. I thought it would cost more fuel. But no, idling our engine costs the exact same. If we were to retract our hard points, much easier. There we are. So we're spending less now because our hard points aren't deployed. Um, underneath that are your two utility units, your landing gear and your cargo scoop. Every ship will have one. You don't have to spend money for it. It will come with it automatically. I've well, set those to key bindings. In this case, the on the numpad, the Dell key is our landing gear. We can hear that deploying and then lady will say... Did she shout? And we can just hit that again. And there she goes. Lovely. And our cargo scoop, again we bound that to another button, so that one is, is the zero on the numpad to the left of the Dell key. Press that. Ooh, it just whoo -hoo, a little flourish. And now our cargo scoop's deployed. If we have a look outside. Ooh, ominous. Pretty sure that's not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> That's one day. <laughs> okay. So, if we have a look outside, we can see that our cargo scoop has been deployed. And if we were to get some stuff, we can scoop it up there and it will be taken into our cargo hold. Thusly. Universal cargo door. Superb. There we are. So we just press zero again to close that up. To the right of that, you will have your HUD display, which are these two uh, sort of bent uh, orange lines, um, and they will display weapons and utilities that you have available to you. If we deploy our weapons, ignore that, <laughs> and we'll see there on our primary two, so that's our second fire group. On primary one, we've got a kill warrant scanner and a couple of beam lasers. So they're now active, and we can fire them. We can change fire groups. Secondary two. Fire them. Oh, I would love to if, uh, if 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 it worked. To check our fire groups there. Are they actually on? Yeah, they should be. Why are they not working? Oh. Why they weren't um, turned on? Okay. So, cool. There we are. So those are our weapons are raised. There. Just had a bit of a power issue. Don't worry. So those are those, and you can see there, um, laser weapons will be displayed by a solid line as we fire them. It will run out. And as they recharge, it will fill. More pips to weapons, we'll speed that up. On the left hand side, we've got some projectile weapons. Two cannons and two rail guns. Now, uh, these require ammunition. And, and ammunition. You can see the first number is how many in the clip, and the second number is how many in reserve. Pretty simple, if you've played any game with guns, that will not be a surprise to you. Um, we've also got some chaff, that's a utility, we see there in the bottom left. We can fire that off with a dedicated hotkey that I've set up in the bindings. And there she is. Very useful. Lovely. And there we are. 
that pretty much does it for the for the main interface. We can see there in the bottom left where we are, which system we're in, the distance to our locked-in destination. If we were to target the station, especially for Coriolis stations, actually, um, you can see now. Now it's changed to. We're going to retract our weapons. We don't want to fire at the station. Um, we can see that there is a now a 3D display of the station as it directly appears relative to our position. So we can see here it's a bit of a corner facing us, and indeed there is on the display there. Now you might see there are some artificial arrows on this display that aren't on the station. This is only for Coriolis starports, and it means it's just guiding us to where the bay is, because all the sides look the same, so it can take a while to find it. Now we can just have a look and the arrows will show us where the docking bay is. Um, in the top right you will find information. Uh, these are things such as whether targets have deployed hard points, um, whether your frameshift drive is charging or cancelled. Oh, I thought that did display there, it doesn't. Um, and basically anything about your ship and what's, what's going on. On the left hand panel is your communications display. Um, direct messages, you can see there at the, the top, the front word, uh, the first word is direct. That's directly to your ship. Um, if there is another one that says local, it means that somebody is broadcasted on all frequencies that will be heard throughout the system. Um, so we can see here, every station will give you these, these standard um, messages. So, you know, just, just have a look. In your comms display, if we focus on that, I'm going to press C. We can broadcast something on local. Broadcasting now can... Any commanders hear me? Please bask in my droning wisdom. So we just broadcasted that now to Wall of Ross 878. If there are any commanders there, they might choose to respond to me. Who knows? Um, so we're going to press C on my binding to open up that panel and go um, to the next tab. So we've got a couple of our friends online, Nathan Deverne. If we wanted to do anything with Nathan Deverne, we can start a text chat with him. We can invite him to our wing. We can send a voice comms request or back. There, get out of that. And we can do that. So Genetics is in a private group, so he's not actually in our universe. He's in a parallel one, but it's just him and his bread and him and his buddies. So there we are. So we can't join his wing. But Commander Nathan Devan, that's a different story. Then uh, to the right of that is our inbox. Baumgarten has, has uh, sent me a friend request. Thank you, Baumgarten. I'm going to accept that. This is a moment in history. And now we can see now friends with Commander Baumgarten. Superb. Weekly power bonus vouchers. You have unclaimed weekly power bonus worth nearly 1,000 credits. Wow. I actually am now rank 3 with my power play faction. Um, <laughs> but uh, that hasn't kicked in yet. I'll get it next week. Right, and then at the far right, you've got your preferences panel. So incoming text channels, you can turn off local. You can turn off voice. You can turn off wing. Uh, you can turn off direct approaches from other players. Um, also, this function, if you, go into a not, if you go into a wing with other players in it, obviously there will be other players in it, um, voice communications between the two of you or three of you or four of you will be automatically enabled. If you want to turn that off, hit that button there. So I'm going to press C again to come out of that. And that is your main display. We've now covered 66% of your starship. You have a throttle and a joystick. And if you use your one in real life, it'll do that. If you press a button on this one, it'll do that. Wow. If you crawl forward, I thought, that's just so cool. So cool. There we are. Now we're going to retract those. So that just leaves us with the third panel on the right-hand side. Here we are. This is the big old one. So come, you'll start with status. Commander Nova Kane, combat rank expert. And then it says 73%. So I'm 73% of the way to 100%. And that will put us on the next rank up, which is master. And the same goes for trade, exploration, and CQC. It's all measured in money. Um, so the more money you make from all of these four, uh, the better you will be. Pretty simple. On the right-hand side is a very important screen that tells you all about what you are doing in your current area. So this is our reputation um, this is our galactic reputation. So, Federation, we're allied, but they're getting a bit pissed off at me because I've been doing a bit of piracy. Um, we are a warrant officer with the Federation. Empire, don't know who I am, and I'm not admitted to the Imperial Navy. Uh, the Alliance, don't know who I am. Underneath that are the system factions. So these are the factions that are active in this system only. So we can see here, Ross 878 United Interstellar. 
they are independent and they don't care about me at all. Um, same with the one underneath. Uh, now, Revolutionary a Ross 878 Resistance, we can see here on the left of that name is a Federation logo, which means they're a federal aligned faction, which means my reputation with the Federation will be mirrored in my reputation with this faction. So we're allied, but they're a bit pissed off. Now, Ross 878 Major Network wanted. They are in charge of the system, they have the highest influence, they are federal aligned, and that is the only reason why this is a federation system. Um, we can see here uh, that my I have a bounty of 20,024 credits, um, and that will turn dormant in six days and four hours, which is a long time. <laughs> Well, there we are. We can go left and right to see other screens as well. System status. We can see all the different factions of the system, much like we did on the previous screen, but now we can see what their influence is. Uh, they're all pretty stable. No up or down arrows. Uh, we can see here that the major network faction is very much in control of this system, uh, with 64% of the overall influence um, politically and economically. Uh, we can have a look. This is our finance screen. We'll just go on to the right again. Um, actually, if we go back to system status, um, and we can select any of these by using the menu select button, we can see uh, corporation, dictator, political party, unfettered, which is whatever, <laughs> um, they're not really organized, and the main organization is a corporation, um, and they have a current state, which is boom, um, which means that uh, they're enjoying sustained financial growth, which might have an impact for traders. Uh, you might expect to have higher demand for certain products and cheaper prices for others. Superb. I'm going to go to the right. Uh, finance. Our balance is 70,000 credits. We've taken some hits recently. Um, insurance. Cargo insurance is 0%. I think only certain individuals um, have the opportunity to have cargo insurance. I think that maybe was a beta backer perk. Uh, our ship insurance is 95%, meaning our rebuy cost is 896,094 credits. If we were to blow up now, it would cost us that much to get our ship and everything on it back, and not including cargo, very important. Um, we have had a loan from the bank, because we blew up previously. We currently owe them 271,875 out of a maximum of 1 million, which means we have total credit availability of 728,125. So that plus the 70 we've got in the bank means we're not going to be able to cover our rebuy costs. So if we did blow up, we're going to have to sacrifice some modules in order to get our stuff back. Uh, finds and bounties, you see there at the bottom, galaxy-wide, 20,024. Go to the right again. Statistics. This is your career. Uh, current assets, just shy of 18 million. Uh, then you can see how I've spent it all. Now, outfitting will throw you. Um, because outfitting, remember, every time you sell a module, you get the majority of its value back that you then spend again. Um, so it will sort of compound upon itself. No way I've ever made 92 million quid. Um, but that's, that's the way it's calculated. Everything else is legitimate. So credit spent on ships, repairs, fuel, munitions. That's, that's all... Um, Perfectly natural and correct. Um, 19 insurance claims, which means I've been killed 19 times, and it's cost me 7.3 million credits. Um, you'll see underneath there, um, combat. my combat career have claimed 1,036 bounties, totaling 13.05 million credits. Um, I've cashed in 142 combat bonds for 1.8 million. I've assassinated 40 NPCs. This is from missions, assassination missions, and that's netted me 3.4 million. And the highest one of those was 243,000. Uh, that was for a bounty. Uh, so the highest single reward in combat, 243,000. An anaconda. Quite easy to kill her as well. Uh, crime. I've had 121 fines in my career, totaling 232,196 bounties, totaling 654,000. The highest one issued was in Beliri, uh, where they do charge you a lot if you kill people, 14,000. Smuggling. Anything you sell in a black market will appear here. Um, your network is how many different stations you've had, you've traded with. Um, so you can see there my profits, how many commodities I smuggled. That's per ton, not per different type. Uh, my average profit and the highest single transaction, which is I've sold 20, 30, 40 of something and generated that much. Um, I think it's profit. Um, we'll have to have to have a look. Trading. Again, your market network is how many stations you've you've done that with. Um, the trading profit. How many you've traded, your average profit, and your highest single transaction there. 
Mining. Oh, I love mining. 2.4 million from mining and 454 bits of rock mined in my refinery. Uh, and then same thing from exploration systems visited. Your profits. Level 2 and 3 detailed scans. Don't understand what they are. So have a look. If you do know, put something in the comments box below. Uh, 35,725 is highest payout. So that's the highest single thing you have scanned that you've been able to sell the data for. Um, and then underneath there, total hyperspace distance in my whole career. 4,847 light years spread across 530 jumps and I've traveled a maximum uh, radius from uh, LHS 3447 in Trevithic Dock, that's the starter system, um, of 182 light years. Which isn't too good. We can see there underneath CQC statistics, profits, time played, KDR, kills and winter loss. Not too bad at the moment, we've got a 3 on our winter loss ratio. Um, and then we go to permits, if you have acquired any permits from any faction they will be displayed there. And back to reputation again. So that's status. A lot of information on that screen. Hopefully you'll be alright with it. To the right of that, modules. This is everything that is in your ship. You can turn it on and off. Thrusters offline. Thrusters online. Etc. Um, now we can see there, obviously, the name of the unit. To the right of that, uh, the class in the number and the rating in the letter. Um, you will see that in the outfitting screen. If you don't know what I'm talking about, have a look in the Starship Modification Tutorial, also in the Early Dangerous Flight Academy. Um, we can see here, next to the right, on, on the type column, uh, which of the three pips it uses. So thrusters will take energy from the engines, uh, surprisingly. And then the power is measured into percentage of your total output. At the moment it's taking 25% of our total power output, but it's priority one because we need thrusters to do anything. Um, and so on and so forth. Weapons will have their weapon type. And so on and so forth. Now, priority. Have a look at the Starship Modification Tutorial. Basically, you can use priority to have other units, other modules turn off before other ones to avoid going over your power allowance. At the moment, we're 10% hot, which means we're 10% over our total allowance, um, which is how much our power plant is generating. Um, which means that we'll have to turn off some modules when we deploy our weaponry to avoid a cataclysmic shutdown like we had earlier and everything just went red and it was horrible. Um, for more information, have a look at the modification tutorial. Oh, that's good. Uh, health. Here you can see we've taken damage from that experiment with uh, heat earlier. Um, but other than that, we're all right. If a module gets below 75%, it is likely to malfunction, and that likelihood increases the more damage it becomes. So if you are in combat with an enemy, and they target your power plant, if they get it to zero, there's a chance you'll just explode right there and then. But um, if they get it to 75, 50, 25, it is likely to malfunction, decreasing your power output and turning everything off, unless you've got a priority system in place. Um, same thing, frame shift drive. If you're if they're targeting that, and they damage it to such an extent that it might malfunction, you might be trying to jump away to escape, and your frame shift drive collapses, and then you are likely to explode. So um, be aware, be aware, and that can happen with any module in your craft, including your thrusters and shield generator. Fire groups. Now, in Elite Dangerous, you have primary and secondary fire, which means you can press one button to fire one group and another button to fire another group. Um, and some modules, such as heat sinks, chaff, and shield cell banks, you can bind to separate keys. But in terms of your main weapons, they are either primary or secondary, which gives you a bit of a challenge, um, because if you only want to fire one of them, or maybe another one, so say, I'm just going to clear all of these. So we get an idea of what we're working with. This is taking too long. <laughs> there we are. There we are. So now we've not assigned anything to anything. So no matter what we do, none of our weapons will work. Say we wanted to create a, a method where we deploy our weapons. We can actually see here no fire groups defined. Um, Let's say we wanted to come up with a, with a way where we're just throwing one of our beam lasers and one of our rail cannons. So we're going to the right there, we're going to fire groups. We'll have one of the beam lasers and one of the rail cannons. So now we can press our primary fire. 
Job done. Let's say we wanted to have a choice about which to fire. We set the railgun to secondary fire. So I can hold primary fire. And it'll do that. And now I hold secondary fire. Or I let both let go of both and just press secondary fire. Pretty simple. So if I wanted to have both beam lasers and both rail guns, so I could fire the primaries, and then when my target shields were down, for example, I could then press secondary, and they'll fire those. Pretty simple. The way I've got it set up at the moment is we've got the cannons there. So it does give me a choice about whether to fire the railguns because there is a delay with the railguns. You're going to hold the trigger now for about three seconds. So I can fire my beams and then let go of those, fire the cannons, and then fire the rails three seconds after. Or fire the cannons and then let go of the button and the rails won't fire. So that's one thing I'm working with at the moment. We've got limpet controllers. We, if we put those, if we, if we put that on the same fire group, what's going to happen? So we don't actually have any limpets at the moment, so it's not going to work. But if I fired my beam lasers, that collector will also fire as well. That might not be what we want to do. So we can go to the right and create a new fire group. So let's say we just wanted a fire group for the limpets. We can put the collector on primary and the hatch breaker on secondary. Then we go back, and using our change fire group button that we have established in the binding screen in the options menu, we can switch between the two. And we can see here, primary on the right, secondary on the left, we've got our two modules. We don't have any limpets, so they're not going to work. Um, but now if we press primary, it would fire off a collector. Secondary, fire off a hatch breaker, and then use the change fire group button again to get back to our primary super weapon one. <laughs> uh, back to the right. What else have we got? We got a cargo scanner and a kill warrant scanner. Maybe we wanted to have those activate when we fired on an enemy target. So we see a craft, we know he's wanted. So we already know that we're able to shoot at him. But we want to get a kill warrant scan on him to maximize our profits. If you don't know what I'm talking about, have a look at the Elite Dangerous Job Center video on bounty hunting. Um, then we can do that whilst we're firing at him. Because we set it to the primary fire group, so as the beams are firing, the scan will initiate. We don't have a target at the moment, but that's what we'd have. So there we are. Again, chaff launcher, shield cell bank. We have buttons that we can bind directly for them. Chaff, button 1, shield cell bank, button 3 on the numpad for me. You will do whatever you like. Um, and that's basically how fire groups work. We can have up to 8 of them. And you can mix and match with your differing tastes. Let's say we wanted um, a scan only one, we could just do that. Or if we wanted to kill Warren scan without cargo or vice versa, we just differ them. So now different buttons for each. Pretty simple. To the right of that, your cargo screen. If you have a refinery, it will be on the left hand side. It will display you uh, how many bins you've got, what is in them and how, mu how close you are to providing a, a ton <laughs> of, of them um, have a look at the mining video for more information now you can see here out of date goods uh, that's going to be power play related so pfft, whatever um, we can see here we've got some stolen stuff this video is recorded after our piracy tutorial got some drugs some semiconductors some loud enrichment systems non-lethal weapons tasers and auto fabricators um, so, excellent. If we get scanned with that, we're in trouble, because they're all stolen. And narcotics are illegal, so that's even worse. So that's all good. Now, if we have anything we don't want, like these out-of-date goods, for example, we can click on it, and we've got these three options, either to get out of the screen there. Now, we can either jettison it, or jettison and abandon it. What's the difference, I hear you say? Basically, if you jettison and abandon cargo, then anyone picking it up will be able to salvage it legally, which means if they are scanned with it, they will not get a fine, and they are able to sell it on the open market instead of having to go to the black market. So, we are not going to do that on this occasion. We are just going to jettison it. All ten tons. And now let's have a look where that's gone. Where's it gone? Ah, there they are. There they all are, just floating away. 
No, didn't mean to do that. There we are. And now you'll see them on your left-hand panel under contacts. We'll see them there. They'll slowly degrade because they're not designed to be um, out in the vacuum of space. And we can target them. So if that was a pirate, for example. I'm sorry I'm hitting that. Oh, wait, no, I see. Ugh. I'm just mucking about now. I should really be doing the video. So now we can see we're... Oh, there we are. That's done. So if you've got a pirate who's uh, forced you to drop some cargo, you can just spite him. And carve them all up. That's one thing you can do. Uh, but obviously, how to do that is all through your cargo screen. If you do it too close to the station, you'll be done for littering. Seriously. So be, be aware. To the right of that is the functions screen, and here we end our journey. Faction is if you are in a combat zone and playing as a mercenary. Have a look at the um, have a look at the tutorial for the Elite Dangerous Job Center Mercenary Edition to see what's going on with there. Landing gear and cargo scoop. We've got dedicated functions. If we haven't bound a key to them, we can turn them on and turn them off. Beacon. If we have a wing, we can set off a wing beacon, which means anywhere in the system, in supercruise or not, um, our wingmates can hone in on our beacon and drop into normal space where we are. Um, so that's important if we're in a random uh, unidentified signal source or if we've interdicted a craft, etc. It's off by default. Silent running. We know what that does. Uh, ship lights. Love them. Pretty simple. I've found that to well. I use them a lot. Flight assist. What is flight assist? Now we'll cover this. It's not very complicated. Basically, imagine you're moving in three directional space, um, like you're in Interstellar or any other science fiction film. Obviously, you go forward. I'm now applying thrust with my thrusters, so I'm being pushed forward relative to, to where I am um, by those thrusters. And then if I throttle to zero, obviously the thrust will stop at the back. But importantly, reverse thrust will start. We can just see them there. Reverse thrust will fire to the front to slow us and eventually stop us. And the same goes with any dimension. Up, down, left, right, and forward and back. Turn flight assist off and those counter thrust maneuvers will not fire. So flight assist off. Full power. And then we're going to throttle to zero. It just turns off the reverse. Doesn't activate these emergency thrust not emergency, these reverse thrusters here to the front of the craft. So we will keep going at 73 meters per second forever, unless we encounter some huge gravitational body, which it's not looking likely we're going to in the next 2,000 years. So, not too bad. Um, if we, so at the moment we're moving in one dimension, we're moving just forward. Everything else is stable. If we fire off a thruster that rolls us, so I'm just going to hit the joystick. Now we've got a slight roll, speed that up, and there we are. It'll keep doing that. We can also pitch, pull back, and there we are. It'll just keep doing that forever. And that is our attitude. So we're going to turn flight assist on, and it will automatically fire counter thrusters to level us off. And also bring our speed down to zero. Simple as that. That's what flight assist is. You can use it to make sick turns. And also, this is a favorite move of some people. I'm going to head toward Jake's Enterprise. Flight assist off. Turn round. Now again, use our compass display to get ourselves so it's right behind us. Takes a little bit. There we go. Try and level, level this off reasonably. That'll do. And now if we go back, we can see that we are hurtling to the station backwards, like a boss. There we are. Some of our thrusters appear to be firing. All the ones on the top appear to be firing. 
God, this is a beautiful ship. I do love Professor Chunk. So now we're getting a little bit closer. That's special. So there we are. I didn't mean to do that. It happens every every time I come in from, from the camera mode. So flight assist back on. And it will level, level us off. Um, what else is on the function screen? Rotational correction. entirely sure what rotational correction does. It doesn't seem to be having any impact on us. Sounds cool. Though. <laughs> it's on by default. Keep it that way. Turret weapon mode. If you have turreted weapons, um, which we don't, you can basically choose whether they fire at any hostile targets, just the ones in front of you, um, or just the one you have targeted, but in any position. Pre-flight checks. Basically, if you're new to the game, Check this out, uh, turn it on, it's on by default, it will turn it off the first time you do it. Basically will in ensure that you know how to control your craft and have all the keys bound before you take off for the first time. You can turn it back on, it's basically like resetting the tutorial. Report crimes against me. If you are shot at by someone who doesn't have the right to shoot at you, if this is on, police will come to your aid after a period of time, assuming there is a police force in the system you're in. I have it off, because a lot of the things I do are something the police doesn't need to worry about. Orbit lines, purely aesthetic. Um, if we were in super cruise, we would see the orbital pathways of the planets in the system. Interface brightness. That's what that does. Uh, gun sight mode, leading or trailing. I, have, I don't know what the difference is. Leading works for me. Sensor scale type, logarithmic or linear? Linear. Logarithmic. Looks exactly the same to me. Reboot and repair. Diagnostic repair sequence initiated. Thrusters offline. We don't want the power sequence fail. Basically, that scenario, if you have a module that has malfunctioned, that is how you will be able to attempt to get it back online. Doesn't always work. We don't have anything that's actually failed at the moment. So that's probably why it hasn't worked. Self-destruct. Yeah, click it. Confirm. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yes, it will blow you up. That's what it does. I think there's a countdown, but I'm not going to risk it. So, that's it. That is the interface. If you've come along hoping for um, some tutorials on um, the galactic map, go to the next episode, the navigation tutorial. Now, we're going to finish with an idea of how to dock. How to dock, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I had a look. On YouTube, I typed in Elite Dangerous How To and saw the autocorrect responses. Doc is at the top of that list, ladies and gentlemen. It's not difficult, but don't worry, I know it can be daunting at first. So we're going to approach the station, Jake's Enterprise. We can see there at the bottom left, it's a Coriolis starport. We can see um, the arrows on the 3D display saying that it's to the docking port is below the bottom left of our current uh, approach. We can see it there just to the left of the Jake's Enterprise wording. So we're just going to maneuver ourselves. Now, we're heading for the opening port. We're going to go left, contact, Jake's Enterprise will be at the top, select, request docking, select. Back to center. Granted. Now, our compass is not tracking the station. It is tracking the pad that we need to get to. We have some illegal cargo on board. And our shields are not quite there yet. So we're going to approach. It does take a little bit of practice. Don't worry about it. You can't get docking computers. And now we can see, where's our pad? What's going on? Follow the compass. We can see if we pivot down, that's where it's going to be. Landing gear down. Nice and slowly. I've got the lights on to give me a better understanding of the distance between me and the landing pad. Now we're going to go nice and easily. Get ourselves in the crosshair displayed at the bottom, and then vertical thrust downwards just a smidge. 
And we can see there we're a meter off the ground. Another little smidge. Done. We're going to enter the hangar. So down, menu select button. And then up, starport services. And then we've got this screen. So we can see where we are, who's running it, what the time is in GMT, um, whether there is a power play faction here, and then we get the, the basics. So refuel 10% or everything. We've only, we use less than 10% so we refuel it. Uh, repair everything and reload all the weapons we spent. So there we are. Munitions, if we needed limpets we'd get them here. Um, same with well, they're automatically done by the re uh, the reload all function there. Bulletin board is where you find your weapons. Contacts are where you turn in your bounties and combat bond vouchers and talk to your... Ooh, I can get a thousand credits. Uh, and talk to your power contact if you have one. This station doesn't, but somehow we can still get our salary. Uh, so we're going to go back. Um, if there is an outfitting facility, click that button. We can go and do all this. Again, this is all about the Starship modification tutorial. So have a look at that. Uh, shipyard. If you want to buy a new ship, that's how to get it. So this station's got a nice selection, including an ASP. Love it. Uh, Type 7 Federal Assault Ship. Ooh, it's the first one I've seen of those. 20 million. A Federal Lance. Very nice. Four medium one, one huge. Just skips large. Amazing. Uh, Python and a Type 9. Commodities market, if you want to trade, buy and sell, have a look at what the demand is. So at the moment, domestic appliances at Jake's Enterprise, uh, they, they love their domestic appliances. They, good on you. Uh, they have a high supply of synthetic meat, which means they're price dumping it. 132 credits a ton sells an average of 324. So if you go to a system where it's in high demand, that'll probably be about 500. Um, you know, have a look at the trading tutorial. And Universal Carter Graphics. Have a look at the Discovery tutorial on the Elite Dangerous Job Center. Um, if we had any cartographic data to be sold, it would be available here. And we could just click it, sell it, done. doesn't matter well you, where you sell the data, and to my knowledge, it doesn't have an impact on reputation with the faction. Uh, but I could be wrong. And that's it! That is everything. That is all the buttons you need to press to be successful in Elite Dangerous, as well as make sure you know what button your ship's lights are attached to. Thank you very much. If you've just got the game, or you're coming back to it after an extended period, it can be daunting. It can be. It's a very complicated game. Um, well, it's not very complicated, but, you know, it, it doesn't hold your hand, really. Which is what keeps people like me in business, really, so that's good. So click on some ads, please. <laughs> but, most importantly, subscribe, like, and comment if you feel the need to do so, and hopefully you do. Um, I've been Nova Kane. Thank you so much for watching, and do stick around for the other videos in the series and more to come. So, once again, thanks for watching. Do like and comment and subscribe if you wish to, and I certainly do wish you do. Um, and until next time, Professor Chunk and I, signing off. Next time on the Elite Dangerous Flight Academy. We're going to be looking at outfitting, although I've decided to be different to call it Starship Modification, because that sounds a bit better. We're going to be looking at the outfitting screen, power usage, mass, and all the various trinkets you can stick on your Starship to make it personal to you. So make sure you stick around, do subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Previously on the Elite Dangerous Flight Academy, are going to be talking to you about basic flight. We're going to talk about docking as well. <laughs> and I nearly forgot. L for lights. Make sure you turn your lights off when you leave your craft, otherwise you come back and the battery will be dead. Good day to you, Commanders, and welcome to this edition of the Elite Dangerous Flight Academy. 
My name is Commander Nova Kane, and today we're going to be flying Professor Chunk, all there in her beautiful purple, in a mission to try and discover how on earth to actually understand all of the little pips, buttons, and functions that your starship can deliver. So, this is going to be a short video. Hopefully you'll be able to rewind and, and get to whatever place may be of best use for you. But we're going to be talking about how to navigate the in-ship interface, as well as the interface you will find at stations, such as the one behind me. So, without further ado, let's get started. So here we are, let's just turn around and get a nice shot of that station. There, at the beginning. Lovely. So, we're going to turn on head look mode, and we can see here, we're in a nice cockpit and it has glass. It has shields. I have a bounty in this system. Oh dear. Um, we're going to be talking about everything you can see in front of me, as well as the left panel and the right panel. That's what we're going to be looking at. See? 20 grand bounty there. We're going to be talking about everything. And just to give you a rough idea, we're going to be starting with the central cockpit interface. Then we're going to be going off to the left. Then we're going to be going off to the right. We're going to be talking about all the ship functions and what they're all for. So, without further ado, let's get started on the left-hand panel, pilots, and it will come up first with navigation. You'll notice there on the top, there are five potential tabs for this panel here on the left. The two, the last two on the list, the sub-targets and cargo tabs, are currently blocked out because we don't have a target selected. Now, we're going to start with navigation. When you enter any system, uh, these, the closest star will always be listed first, but then everything that you know about in the system, uh, that is, you've got the exploration data for, uh, either you purchased it, discovered it yourself, um, or it's a system with a large enough population that you already know where everything is. Um, and that's, I think that's above one million, one million people. Uh, but we'll have to see. They'll all be listed here. Uh, distance is listed on the right. Uh, the stars there at the top first. Everything else is listed by um, which entities are closest. The station here is listed after the planet for some reason. I guess that's a some sort of subdivision. We're 25 kilometers from the station and 10.4 megameters from the station. That's obviously million meters. Um, and then the most common unit of seconds, 14, 13, etc., to arrive. If we increase. Obviously, the projection will match that. If we decrease, same thing. So it'll give you a rough idea. Of course, space is relative. Um, and as you have to slow down to actually approach targets in Super Cruise, again, have a look at the navigation tutorial. Um, it, just, it took three days. <laughs> um, uh, then the the clock will change, so you might find that it will stay on eight seconds because you're slowing down as you approach. So it's all relative, um, but that's how you're going to arrive safely. So there we are. We've also got a heat display here on the left-hand side. Um, the I, I I tell you what, I'm going to turn on silent running, silent running. and we'll see. That's so basically what I've done is I've turned off my radiators. You can see the heat starting to rise from my main reactor. And so that's slowly climbing. At 40%, we're fine. 42, 45. Not too bad. If we were to fire our boost thrusters, that goes up a lot quicker now. And until we turn off silent running, we have no way of venting this heat unless we had a, a heat module, a heat sink launcher. So when we start getting towards 100, we will get a temperature warning. We will start to see the dashboard steam as we get towards the big one double O. Lots of lights and warnings. Now we're gonna hit 100% so we are now at thermal tolerance of this craft. The heat will keep rising. We can see now we're in the danger zone. Now it's much like a rev counter. Oh, oh I forgot <laughs> so much. No, Right, now we're at 122, 124. We'll have a look at our modules on the right-hand side. They're taking some damage. So we are now going to deactivate silent running and open the vents, and we'll vent that heat away. So that's an idea of the heat um, display there. 
and not to turn on sticky keys. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't believe that happened. Um, and our shields will now start to recharge. So if we get over 100, we're going to start taking damage. If we get to 115, 120, we're going to start taking serious damage. Much higher than that, and you're going to be looking at ship destruction, so be aware. Now, going from that in a clockwise fashion, we've got our ship display. Very simple. It will show your relative position. On the right, so I'm looking at the at the display there with my ship 3D hologram in it. So if we're pivoting, or rolling, or yawing, it will display our direction. Um, we can see our shield there. It's currently recharging. And underneath that is our hull integrity. So it's listed in bars and a percentage there. Percentage is what you spend most of your time looking at. Remember, we're 99% because we crashed inside the station prior to recording. <laughs> um, to the right of that is our energy display. Now, this is very important. There are three main um, groups of systems within your craft, and they each have varying energy needs. The more energy you pump into them, the better they'll perform. Systems, engines, and weapons, represented by SYS, ENG, and WEP. At the bottom there, RST stands for Restore. Uh, then we know they're going to be at 90 degree angle vertically. So if you look up, indeed, there they are. Superb. So that's how we use the sensor display. That's roughly how it works. Frontier have released an official video about the interface. Do check that out in addition to my own commentary. Um, so sticking with the sensor, we've got a panel here on the right-hand side... That is our throttle control. Now, I'm using a HOTAS joystick setup, which means I have an analog control over it. So I'm just going to throttle up a little bit, and we'll see there. And we'll just put it on a teeny, teeny, tiny amount, and we're going to get up to 20. Now, 20, it's measured in meters per second. So if we have a look there, 25.4 kilometers. So it's going to be very, very slowly moving that way. But it's so massive that it, we're, not, we're barely going to register a difference there. Um... Now, you might be noticing the little blue zone there in the right. I'll give you an idea what that is. I'm going to turn flight assist off. Flight assist off. You can see there, it's very, very different. I still haven't told you what it is. We're going to turn flight assist back on. Basically, that little blue zone is um, a guide to what level of thrust will give you the best turning circle for your craft. It obviously differs depending on what thrusters you have, how heavy you are, and what ship you're piloting. Professor Chunk here has got a blue zone between roughly 140 to 115. And that means if we're in that blue zone, then we're going to get the best turning circle. So that's what we've got now. Nice and smooth. We'll put it down below the blue zone and then try to do the same thing. It's it, it, it might not look slower, but it feels so much slower. So if you want to make some quick turns, keep in that blue zone. On the left-hand panel is the compass. That is the single most important thing in this central display, I believe. So at the moment, remember our navigation lock is a belt cluster somewhere down here that's the the orange pip there telling us if we went to relock on jake's enterprise lock destination then we can see the compass has changed and now it's gone from hollow to solid and we're pretty much dead center so now it's aiming us towards jake enterprise so let's say something bad happened and we got completely out of kilter and uh, and bad stuff happened or we were in super cruise and we were looking to see where, where the station was. Let's have a look at where it is now. So the compass, it's gone a little bit towards the bottom and the, and the left there, but it's also become hollow. Hollow means that it's behind us. So there is a, a plane that sort of goes in a circle from the side of your ship all the way around, and if it's this side of it, that compass will be solid. If it's behind it, it will go hollow, like so. And just to demonstrate, we're going to turn around, and there we are, you saw it went hollow as it passed the plane, and now there we are, 32 kilometers away from Jake's Enterprise, and closing. Now you see there's a little number there, that means if we stay at 70, it'll level off, and we're well, 71 now, 
So at this speed, the Jake's Enterprise is, is a stationary point. Um, it will take us 7 minutes and 15 seconds. We also are owed a, a 1,300 quid from Alliance members for shooting some people. Uh, so, so that's that. If you don't know what that is, have a look at the Power Play tutorial. Also, isn't this the best text tone ever? Under the sea. Fantastic. Uh, contacts. Contacts will have everything you can see on your sensor readout. If you're in Super Cruise, it will also list other people um, who are in Super Cruise that you can detect. Uh, at the moment, we've only got one contact on our radar that's big enough to register at this distance, and that's Jake's Enterprise, um, which is the station in front of us. Which, I mean, quite clearly, it's there. We can see it, so no problem. If we were to target Jake's Enterprise... Then, look at that, the other two light up. Sub-targets, no subsystems, because it's a station. If it was a starship, we would see all of the systems on that craft, such as their frameshift drive, their power plant, their weapons arrays, etc., and we could target them independently if we were to assault that craft. Cargo, if we had a cargo scanner, again, if it's a craft, we had a cargo scanner, we could scan and see what they have on board, whether it's worth our while um, as a pirate. Have a look at the Elite Dangerous Job Center tutorial on piracy for more information. So, that's everything there is to this panel. Not too bad at all. On the right-hand panel, things get a slightly bit more complicated. So, we are going to stick with the center panel at the moment. And we're going to go from the bottom center, which is our um, flight control and scanner readout display. Now, this has its own button that you can use to focus in on it. I'm using the shift key, left shift. Um, in my Novocaine bindings, um, but obviously do whatever's best for you. So we can see here that our ship is uh, the yellow triangle in the center of the display, and dead in front of us is the station. Now I'm going to give you an idea of how this works in terms of the orientation. So let's put ourselves at a 90 degree angle to the station, so the station is directly underneath us. I'm just going to pull back on the throttle. And how do I know when it's directly underneath us? Right there. So if we have a look now, we can see that the l there's a line coming from that station that's going directly from our position downwards, which means they are directly downwards. And so if we were to correct that, we would go forward and we see there, it, now that line gets shorter. And if the line is short, if the line is short or doesn't exist, then they are on your horizontal plane. If they, and then if they're on the horizontal plane, so obviously that's left and right, uh, there'll be no line. And then you really just have to get them uh, towards the top of the ring there. So if they were 90 degrees to the right of us, we could probably do this a bit quicker. <laughs> there we are. So if they were 90 degrees to the right of us, it would look da, 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 da. it would look like that and the same goes for the four compass points there so if there is a vessel that is there well we know we know roughly we know exactly where they are now they're straight underneath us and similarly if there is a readout that reads like this You know what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> um, you will find in Super Cruise, when you're going between different parts of a single solar system, is a unit of measurement called light seconds, which is obviously light years, but instead of years, they're seconds. So light would take 299 seconds to get from that belt cluster to my current position. Um, and if we were traveling at the speed of light, it would take 299 seconds for me to reach that position there. So, there we are. That's the navigation panel. Now, if we were to press our primary fire button or whatever you've got bound to menu select in the options screen in the control bindings menu, uh, we will have this option. We can either lock destination, which if we go back to our central center panel here, we can see there in the bottom left hand corner it's locked in the nav beacon as our current destination and the compass there. We'll be, we'll be talking about the, what the compass is. I said we'd start with this, but we've gone to this. There we are. We'll, we'll, go, we'll go clockwise. Um, the compass there is, is telling us where to go. We'll talk about exactly what that means in a moment. So back to the left-hand panel. We can do that with, with anything we see. Lock destination. Or we can lock and it'll super cruise automatically. So if we did that, 
it will charge up our frame trip drive, but we're not going to do that. So I just pressed uh, menu select again to cancel that. Now on the left hand side, you've got the galaxy map, the system map, and galactic powers screens. Now we will talk about those in the navigation tutorial, which is also part of the Lead Dangerous Flight Academy. So do stay tuned, um, but we can access these through this panel here on navigation. Above those buttons, you get some information about the system, such as where you are. We are currently um, the closest area we are to is Jake's Enterprise, uh, starport in Ross 878, uh, and that is where we are. The destination we've selected, which in this case is a belt cluster, is 305 light seconds away, and you see that's um, listed underneath the location there in the top left of the panel. Now, we're going to go to the next tab, which is Transactions. Transactions is one of the most important panels um, to keep uh, an eye on your career. It will have contracts. These are missions that you've accepted from various stations, including ones that have been completed, but you haven't yet gone to get paid yet, like this one. So if I went to Fane's to Quimper Dock, I'd cash in 41 grand for shooting some smugglers. Damn smugglers. Um, and now we've accepted all of these missions. So this one's going to expire quite quickly, and that's worth quite a bit. <laughs> We need to get four more of those um, within 45 minutes. I'm sure we can do that. Um, so we've, we've got all of these here. Um, underneath those, we've got active bounties. So in this system at the moment, 20,000 is on my head for this system. If I was to get killed by a bounty hunter, that would turn into a dormant bounty, as are all of these. See, I've been killed a lot <laughs> for these ones. Uh, Beliri, I was undermining the Emperor. Um, and got quite a bounty on my head in Boliri. But now, now they're all dormant. Uh, the key thing to uh, know about dormant bounties, you can see them here on the transaction time. If I was to go to Boliri and shoot somebody, I think they have about 15,000 bounty per space murder. If I was to do that, it, it wouldn't start a new bounty. It would increase that one. So it would be 175,000. And that's, that's no good. That's enticing. So there we are. Lots of those. And these are claims. So these are bounties that we've got on other people here. So we've got our 1,000 credit weekly bonus from Zachary Hudson. Tr terrific. And 